that's it. The DC Extended Universe is now over with the release of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Now, don't expect this to be the grand send-off to this universe. It is not. It is a completely standalone Aquaman adventure, which was kind of expected. This movie was never meant to be the final chapter in the DC Extended Universe. And what a crazy universe the DCEU has been. It's like a roller coaster, honestly. There's ups and there's a lot of downs. This universe, I don't think, ever found its footing correctly. And I think the fault really lies with Warner Brothers and whoever owned them, right? It just never really seemed like there was a vision for what this universe could have been. You know, once they did the whole Justice, Justice League experience, I really just think it went downhill after that. It really just showed that they were trying to catch up with Marvel and forgetting what made Marvel so special at that time between 2008 and 2012, they built up to the Avengers. Instead, here we go from Man of Steel to Batman v Superman, and, you know, nothing in between. That's it. And then after that, we get all of these movies. It was really just a dartboard of just a bunch of superheroes, and just whoever owned Warner Brothers at the time just went for it and said, okay, we're gonna do two Superman projects, we're gonna do a Wonder Twins movie, let's do this Batgirl with Michael Keaton, and we have to explain it in The Flash that so it has to release after, and it's gonna be fine, people are gonna really enjoy this, but let's make a different Batman movie and have two Batmans on the big screen at the same time, which is still gonna happen again, but, you know, it's just, there was all this confusion, and I have enjoyed a good chunk of these movies. I think my favorite is The Suicide Squad, I really do enjoy that film, and of course Zack Snyder's Justice League, and the ultimate edition of Batman v Superman, but and Wonder Woman as well. Am I going to miss this universe? I just don't think so. Um, I think the people they cast to perform these characters were pretty good choices. But besides that, not much that I'll probably miss. And I'm excited to see what James Gunn can bring in their new universe. But this is a review of Aquaman 2, and I've gone on quite too long talking about the DC Extended Universe. But what do I think of Aquaman 2? Now, this movie was fun, but that doesn't mean that it was a great movie. It's far from that. Uh, the story is quite a mess. I just, at times, it's like, okay, they're kind of rushing this part. And there's a lot of things I would have actually preferred to have that we didn't really get. I think it would have been really awesome to have an actual bigger battle with Aquaman, and even or maybe, against the evil Lost Kingdom leader. That would have been awesome. Instead, it was just really quick, it felt like. Uh, Jason Momoa is good as Aquaman as always, but I feel that he went a lot of Jason Momoa in this. It was over the top at times. Uh, but there's some great scenes with Orm, and that was my highlight of this film. Orm and Aquaman just have this dynamic that I just couldn't stop laughing at. It's like an 80s, you know, buddy cop movie. And at times, it also mixes with some elements of like a 50s adventure film. So that's really awesome. Black Manta, I do think, is a good villain for this film. I really do enjoy Black Manta's character arc throughout this film. Uh, they do get kind of crazy with power because they get this, you know, the Black Trident. And we really get to see the effects on Manta in this film. And I really do enjoy the character played by Randall Park. They are great in this film. They add a little lightheartedness. And you can really see how they kind of soon change their kind of tone of what's going on. And I really do like how they kind of fix things at the end. How James Wan has crafted a really unique world with Aquaman. He brings these unique underwater environments to life really well, I think. And we explore some really interesting new ones. And the set designs are pretty good in this film. And James Wan just does know how to craft like a really Silver Age comic book movie. But I will say this film, to me, lacks a few of the elements that made the first Aquaman film so special. I don't think there's any action scenes in this film that I'm really going to remember. They felt really rushed, and I think that's a real shame. Now, the underlying message in this film is climate change because of the effects of what Black Manta is doing. And that was a pretty good message. I don't think they overdone it. And it really kind of makes sense into an Aquaman film to have that message. And I really do like the idea at the end, Arthur revealing Atlantis to the entire world. And that could definitely make some very interesting scenes because you got the land and the sea coming together to try to resolve this issue because it affects both. But yeah, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is a fun but flawed film. I think if you were a fan of the very first Aquaman film, you're going to absolutely enjoy this. If you're not a fan of that film, definitely avoid this one. But in reality, 
I just don't see anyone who would really want to see this film simply because it's the end of the DC Extended Universe and what's the point? And we've seen it over and over again this year from Shazam 2 to The Flash, Blue Beetle, and now this. People are just done with the DC Extended Universe and they're ready for something new and different. And let's hope James Gunn can deliver. And I will end this review with saying one little thing about this film. It is a lot better of a sequel than Wonder Woman 1984. So let me know your thoughts on Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone.